Hey folks, welcome to the Smoke and Tire Podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Off the Record. We talk about them every week, and so you better know who they are right now. They will fight your tickets for you. And you know what I mean? Like, you should fight all your tickets. Like, there's no reason not to. You can't ever get a worse punishment by not fighting your tickets. But you're a busy person. You work for a living. You don't want to spend all your time and energy fighting tickets yourself. That's why Off the Record is here. They will will assign your case to a qualified attorney in whatever jurisdiction you got a ticket in. They'll go to court for you. They'll meet with the prosecutor for you. They will get those points off your record. And if they don't, you'll get your money back. All you do is go to offtherecord.com slash TST or use code TST10 on the Off The Record app and you will get 10% off all legal fees booked through off the record. They are they have a great organization. They have a great track record. Their network of attorneys is awesome. And you don't have to do nothing besides fill out a basic form and send in a photo or scan of your ticket. Off the record's attorneys will handle the rest. So go to off the record.com slash TST or use code TST10 on that Off the Record app and have it ready in your pocket. That way, if you get pulled over, you don't panic because Off the Record is on your team. All right. Today's episode, we got my friends Wes and Cullen, the founders of Notice Watches, with whom I have collaborated to create the amazing Canyon Watch, uh, which is now going to be for sale in its second colorway next month uh, in studio, talking about how uh, they started the company, some of the challenges challenges in designing watches, and a whole lot more. It's the guys from Notice Watches, Wes and Cullen, in studio. It's the Smoke and Tire Podcast. Your uh, Scandinavian um, name, that's probably F1 driver? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. F1 okay. champion. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, would he be the Flying Finn? Is that the Flying Finn, Mika Hawken? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he won. He won in the uh, 90s. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. 98 and 99. Yeah. With McLaren. Yeah. You'd know him if you saw his face, you'd know exact you'd know him exactly. He appears in many a documentary. Okay. Is he fat now? <laughs> it's, been, it's been many decades. I don't think so. He looks like that. Is he fat his hair now? is amazing. Okay. He's got Damn. like he has the most finished face. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Let me look at that fucking hair, dude. That is that is some That's gotta hair. be dyed, right? I don't know. You're just going after. I know. Okay. Are you? Are you like a? You're like a Senna fan or a Lewis fan? You're like fuck this guy. No, I'm a no, Schumacher no, 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 no. fan. <laughs> one of three drivers from Finland and the only one, uh, Formula One drivers from Finland that have won the World Championship and the only one to do it more than once. Works in driver management. He has a new. He has a new like uh, company he wants to talk about, but I want to talk about racing. That's awesome. That's why he's coming over here. Yeah, that's awesome. But today we're talking about watches because the people ask us to talk about watches all the fucking time, yeah. and because we've made a watch. Two of them, even. Yeah. So, uh, so we've got Wes and Colin from Notice uh, in studio, and uh, we got Fern for Colin, single grain Irish whiskey. That's and our third part. It tastes Irish. Does it? Yeah. It uh, it fucking looks Irish. Yeah. And uh, we were doing a little uh, promotional photo shoot for the orange uh, variant of the Canyon. I got mine back, which very excited about this. I love this watch, mm-hmm. and uh, but but. I want to I want to get the uh, the backstory. You don't just you don't just start a watch company out of nowhere. Yeah. So some people do. Some yeah. people do. Like uh, what's that fucking genius Dave Portnoy? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh yeah. Did right. they did they give up? Or are they still making watches? Well, everything's still in. Stock. It still exists. Yeah. Oh, it's of course, it's still it's in a, stock. Yeah. yeah they yeah. didn't sell it. But like the site's still up. So okay. Assume, I don't know. You know what was that brand called again? Brick. Brick, Brick watch. Which is I ro- is a great name for yeah. a total miss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys are Happy throwing name. the most stealthy shade. <laughs> no, like, I did that yeah, one. That was, no, that was, and then he's like, well, they have a lot of stock. Their inventory is high. Yeah. Yeah. I think Mika Hakkinen's probably no. That's what you would say. I'm a fan. Yeah, um, so you don't do that. Uh, you don't uh, just assume. And yeah. uh, but what did you guys started by modifying Seikos, right? So it all started in college. So this is a uh, what year was this? So oh, like oh, the Seiko stuff was like way like maybe like 2013, 2014. Yeah. So yeah. it started. Uh, we both got to watch it at the same time. So uh, 
to back it up all the way. I'm already. Oh, oh boy, you've had, back it up you've all had a centimeter of whiskey. You're fucking struggling. Okay. A long show. To back it up all the way, um, we started out doing music together. Mm-hmm. So uh, we met in middle school, um, and we've been, you know, pretty much best friends ever since. Uh, music, anything creative, you know, that was our outlet. Uh, you we know. actually built guitars too. Really? We built back in the day. Yeah, we, oh, we pretty cool. built guitars. Yeah. In high school, we recorded. Like, yeah, yeah. we ten, recorded ten, our ten, own EP. Um, How were the with guitars? Our band. Well, I mean, they were. Rough. <laughs> it was like put together, pre-made parts. Oh yeah, put yeah. together. We didn't actually like. Yeah, we're not yeah. luthiers. We don't. But like, there was like a bunch of like catalog kind of parts yes. where you can yeah. make your own custom guitar from like this body and this <laughs> yep. neck and these yeah. pickups. So Essentially, is what we did. Yeah, it yeah. was that, and then you had to wire the whole thing, you know, right. solder all the stuff together. Um, so that kind of translated into watches, where we're doing kind of the same thing. Yeah. Um, where, except this time we're designing things from scratch. Right. Um, we both graduated high school, thankfully, uh, <laughs> and then uh, we went to colleges on West Coast, East Coast. I was West Coast, he was East Coast, uh, and we both got into watches at the same time, but but like not separately. At all. Uh-huh. Like I didn't, I had no idea he was into watches. Like you came back for summer vacation. Yeah, it was like you both much. had like modded Seikos. Well, like it was like no, it was like department store watches. Yeah, you had like yeah, a, it was nothing special at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check for, out my fossil, bro. Check it out, wasn't that bad. Check out this Michael a, Kors. Well, my, my first watches. What was it? It was like a PVD, some some kind of black watch. It was called okay. So when I I graduated high school, my mom got me a like a quartz three hand like department store watch. It's called the brand name's called Titus, which uh-huh. is my middle name. Okay. So that's why she got it for me. Um, and then I wrecked it in like a skateboarding accident. Yeah. On, uh, on campus. Happens. And then yeah, I had a quartz to sell. They still yes. exist. So yeah. Titus is actually. It's not this Titus, which is a cool Titus. Oh, there's another. It's, there's another. They got mod. they got bought out like a while ago by okay. some like I don't know, probably some Hong Kong yeah. or Hong Kong Swiss private equity company. I don't know. Um, but now they're department store watches. But where's I going with this? Um, oh, uh, yeah, we got into Seiko's just because that's kind yeah. of like when when you get the addiction. That's where right. you. That's a good place to start. Yeah, you had a Tissot. I remember. Yeah, I had that. a Tissot. Um, like. A quartz department store, too. So yeah. mm-hmm. nothing that special, but yeah. it was enough to give me the bug. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then from there, it was Seiko's, uh, Orient as well. Like yeah. en- basically, like entry level. Yeah. Orient has not gotten enough credit for yeah. being like basically oh, yeah. as yeah. good as Seiko. Yeah. They're, they're pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. Uh, and then the Seiko modding was pretty soon after that for you. Yeah, for right? me. I got like yeah. deep into modding. Like I, every, every single watch I had, I wanted to take apart. And then I got into. I did a lot of flipping. Like I went through so many watches, it's kind of insane. Um, on my like, that's the only way I could afford it, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. In the watch world, they also have this thing similar to what we were saying about guitars, where you can buy different parts that are already made, yeah. brushed, and finished, and everything, and just like assemble it yourself. Yeah. Um, so he did a couple of those because I guess we we both really got into like the higher end Swiss stuff, but we couldn't afford it as college students. So I remember you built this um, this. Tudor well, Black we all wanted a Submariner, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I still do. Yeah. Right? But, There's um, a lot of ways to, like, copy a Submariner yeah. starting yeah. with the Seiko or whatever. Yeah. 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 They but, got the bezels and they got the, the Cyclops glass yep. and yeah. the hands and all that kind of stuff. You can make a pretty convincing oh, replica, yeah. Yeah. you know, with a with a Seiko. Yeah. They look good, too. Yeah. Yeah, they're not bad, yeah. actually. Some of the ones that, they, that like, that Jack Hypoxia dude does yeah. and some, some other folks build are, mm-hmm. are, like, pretty decent-looking watches. I don't know if you've seen uh, Shadow Watchmaker. He oh, makes yeah. these Seiko. He made, one, he made yeah. a watch for me. I mean, we can go yeah. into that because that's how, we, that's how yeah, we, yeah. we got connected, actually. Yeah. Um, so, assembled, like, modding watches. Uh, we both, you weren't so much into the modding. You no, were... I, I never got into the modding. I'm not that good with my hands. But what I did was I went from that you know, the Orient Seiko world, and I went straight into the micro brand world. Uh-huh. So I just became obsessed with, you know, brands like MK2, Helios, some of like the o- Raven, like the OG micro brands that started in what, 2004 to, you know, 2008. You also had your share of sub Submariner homages, like yeah, Steinhardt, yeah. Steinhardt and Squale and stuff oh, like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah the yeah. Swiss made ones. Yes. Right. And, uh, and then, yeah, I mean. It's not a fake if it's in Switzerland. Yeah. It's in the same country. That's That's a law. And soon after that, it was just uh, graduate college, moved out to L.A. to work in the music industry because that, that's what I studied in college. Mm-hmm. And uh, like literally within my first week of being in L.A., we, we met up again and just couldn't stop talking about watches. And we were like, I mean, 
who really wants to work for the men, right? Not not me. Yeah. I haven't in 20 years. Yeah. So, I, so I'd we like figured, to never again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we figured before we have the wife, kids, mortgage, you know, real responsibilities, why don't we try making something yeah. from scratch, you know, get, get the band back together, so to speak. Okay. Yeah. So how, like, you know, where where do you start? Like, like what is the, yeah. not that I want you to give away every single secret, but if someone goes, you know, I'm interested in maybe starting watch, like a watch there's, company. There's no like, secrets. It's pretty, yeah. pretty cut and dry. It's like, I mean, we were following, we we're on the forums back in the day, uh-huh. like watch you seek. And if you follow certain um, brand owners, they post themselves. Mm-hmm. You can see where they're going to like get contacts with suppliers and stuff. So there's times an, were different though. Times then. are different. Yeah. There's an, back then there were a lot more. Um, or back then they were a lot less receptive to helping, but now like, like we just got an email the other day from someone saying, Hey, I want to start a watch brand. Oh, we get emails like can I, uh, every month. Yeah. Uh, can people I asking phone for, with you yeah. for 20 minutes and yeah. just ask yeah. you some questions? And you go, yes, $5,000. Yeah. Hey, that's, that's not, that's I, not a bad idea. Actually, That's what I do. <laughs> yeah. When people, people constantly are like, dude, I want to start a car storage facility. Yeah. Can oh. you teach me how to do it? And I go, yeah, $5,000. <laughs> If I'm going to train my competition, mm-hmm. yeah. I want money. Like, I'm not even shy about it. Yeah. Like, they you should ask for more than that, but yes. Well, it's a day. 5000 uh, a day. You, okay. you know what's Consulting. funny? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Someone... That, that's, a, that's an I'm saying no to you price. Yeah. In le- you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. That's, that's not no. That's just, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. It's some not, kind of barrier. I'm not right? trying to be a yeah. dick, but like, yeah. you, if you want, if what you want is car storage school, like, you sh- you're going to pay for tuition. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> some, uh, there's a microbrand owner who actually started a microbrand university. Mm. And he had attendees, right? Yeah. Is that what it's called? Microbrand University? I mean, yeah. MU, yeah. yeah. MU. Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> it, uh, I think it did like one session. Yeah. And none of those brands took off. So oh, yeah. So I guess I he guess did. Uh, you got to have a record of success. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. otherwise yeah, yeah, you started Trump University. So some people had those ideas, I think. Yeah. But. Um, but I mean, we could tell you how most brands do it, which isn't necessarily how we do it. Um, at least not, not anymore. Um, but typically, so like in the automotive world, OEMs are recognized as like Honda, right? Toyota, yeah. right? Like you, you want, you want to change your rims out. You can either go third party, some some guy down the street might make it, or you could go directly to Honda OEM rims. Yeah. In our world, and also a lot of you know like electronics or um, you know any any product that has a lot of components, OEM would refer more so to a basically a glorified project manager. Okay. So that that entity, a, a person or a company would be the one that has that connection. To yeah, they're the, contractors. Like yes. Honda so goes to Bosch. Contract. Right, yep. right. And to whatever. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, so there, there are a ton of OEMs either in Hong Kong, um, China, Switzerland, and you basically just say, hey, I have this design. I want to make a watch. And then they'll be the ones that basically take care of things on your behalf. Um, if you want it to be Swiss made, they'll take those parts, send it to Switzerland. If you don't really care, they'll just assemble it in either Hong Kong or in China. Or in our case, we assembled everything ourselves. So you, Micro Brand X, mm-hmm. can find a f- total package manufacturer mm-hmm. that will take your CAD design, yeah. and then they'll farm out. You don't even need a CAD design. Just send them a rough sketch that you Seriously? drew on a napkin like oh, when you were drunk in a bar. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow! And They'll then, help you design yeah. it into like an illustration oh. and turn it into like, like full 3D. service. Um, you know, companies that that do from you know point negative whatever. Like from yeah. even before the inception that they do, they can help yeah. you turn something that doesn't exist into something that exists. Okay. Yeah. Now, what I can say though is the easier that process is, the shittier the watch will probably. Sure. End up <laughs> yeah, being, yeah. Right. So right. If you want to do things the right way, is. Um, you know, it would be so like when, when we started, we actually went that route. We had an OEM and we had, you know, we had some time and we had to learn how <clears throat> how the supply chain works and how yeah. how watches are made, really. Um, down the line, probably in like 20, I'd say like 2018, we actually became our own OEM. So we start we stopped going through a middleman and we actually went out and contracted directly. Yeah, we leveraged our own relationships at right. that time because uh, we speak Chinese. Like we we go we go to we went to China back then like twice yeah. a year at least, just to leverage these relationships. We haven't been back in a long time. Yeah, but that's for other reasons. Yeah. All right, everybody, got to take a quick break from the show for Factor. 
This holiday season, you might be looking for nutritious and convenient meals to keep you energized on jam-packed days. I know that in the month of November and December, my days are jam-packed, and I can forget to eat. And by the time I do eat, I make an unhealthy choice or I'm so hungry that I overeat. That's why Factor is so clutch. It's America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service. They help you fuel up fast for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with chef-prepared, dietitian-approved, ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You can save time eat well, stay on track with your healthy lifestyle while tackling all of those holiday to-dos. If you're too busy to cook, but you want to make sure you're eating well, Factor can help you skip that trip to the grocery store, the chopping, prepping, and even the cleaning up while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality that you need. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is heat and enjoy. Skip the stress of meal prepping over the holidays with Factor. Choose from 35 plus weekly flavor-packed, fresh, never-frozen meals that support a healthy lifestyle and meet your meal preferences, all delivered right to your door, ready to eat in two minutes. Get on over to factormeals.com slash tire50 and then use code tire50 to get 50% off. That's code tire50 at factormeals.com slash tire50 to get 50% off. Also brought to you this holiday season by Game Time, GameTime.co. Man, buying tickets to events is getting crazy. They're expensive. You don't know where you want to sit. You don't know parking. You don't know all that stuff, whether it's comedy, music, sports, or theater. And GameTime.co is here with last-minute killer deals, all-in pricing, views from the seat, and the best price guarantee, taking all the guesswork out of buying tickets. I went to a concert recently, got myself some tickets from Game Time. Surprisingly affordable, actually. Last minute, got in the general admission for just 50 bucks. It was clutch. It was easy to go through the process, easy to buy tickets. The pricing was up front. It wasn't like the ticket was 50 bucks and then there was 50 bucks in fees on the other end. It was all inclusive, uh, upfront pricing, so I knew what I was going to pay. Plus, Game Time's got that lowest price guarantee, event cl- cancellation protection, and more. Uh, it's the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase, and you can buy tickets in seconds with just two taps. Game Time is obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets, with deals going right up until the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. You could be like, I want to go to the game now and get a ticket last minute for peanuts, folks. It's the place to find last minute seats. So take all the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Just download that Game Time app, create an account, and use code Smoking Tire for twenty dollars off your first purchase. You can download that app or go to GameTime.co, uh, create an account, and redeem code Smoking Tire S M O K I N G T I R E for twenty bucks off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Now back to the show. But like when we were working together in this watch, you have like CAD designs, or at least yes. at least very good. If it's not CAD, it's like something that's yes. like you're you're coming up with a three dimensional yeah. design that is based on real measurements. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what program are you using for that? Uh, it's uh, it's CAD. It's just CAD. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, yeah, um, we have our engineers to do that. Yeah, uh, we can't be bothered to do that. Um, that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of drawings to do for people. Yeah, um, we we stand more on like the conceptualization yeah. side, uh-huh. yeah. right? Like all the conversations we had, um, sort of all the illustrations that we went back and forth on. So we did all those ourselves. But once you know, once you decided what you wanted to do, yeah, uh, we figured out what we had to accomplish for you. We kind of start working on the other side, on with yeah. the engineers, the manufacturers, the factories, and um, you know, that's at least to us, we've always been product guys. That's when shit gets real fun. Yeah, you know the, yeah. and I think I think the the big difference between our approach to the supply chain versus, um, you know, how we did things earlier in in our career was that we wanted I don't know if it's like I don't know if we're control freaks or something, but we wanted to have a handle on every single aspect, uh, I- including how the loom is mixed. 
you know, how the case is brushed. Every, every like small minute detail that a lot of brands don't necessarily need to, to pay attention to. Yep. Well, you probably have to make a bunch of watches in order to figure out what mm-hmm. is yeah. what good is yeah. and bad yeah. is. And then you go, okay, I know good is this type of brushing and this type of loom yeah. and this type of this. Yeah. So, and even then, it's not really that simple, right? Like, it there are a lot of really small things that go into making a watch that I think probably ninety nine percent of people will never yep. think about or see about. But we have to because it can cause issues down the line, mm-hmm. or that could lead to another issue that could lead to another issue, and then tolerance build up, and then all of a sudden you have a watch that leaks or something. Yeah, right? yeah. So, so all right, so. Five years ago, six years ago, when you decided to start doing everything entirely mm-hmm. yourself, how many different suppliers are you talking oh, to? You've got someone, you're, you're buying movements, you're not making yeah. movements. Yeah, so, yeah. movement is purchased complete. So, move, yeah, complete. It could be either straight from the manufacturer or it could be through resellers. Uh huh. Um, really depends on your connections. Um, and then you have dial, you have factories, you have hand factories, you have case metal factories. Ideally, you know, you're Bracelet end links are made in the same factory as your as the case, case, so, so they fit together, very right. well. Yeah, you have surprisingly rare, actually. Really? Yeah. You have your You'd spring think bar. It's like yeah. a mill, yeah. right? Yeah. It's like a it's like mill work. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Glass spring bar. Yeah. Uh, gaskets. You know. Yeah. Loom, loom. Got to get it straight from RC TriTech. Yeah. Um, They're literally factories that specialize in printing date wheels. Huh. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's crazy. There's there's something for everything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, which is why a lot of brands don't want to do that, right? Because when you're too busy running a business, why do you want to focus on printing date wheels? Well, and, that's and, just... and that's what happened, funnily enough. We focus yeah. a lot on the product, maybe not yeah. enough on the business. Yeah. Yeah. But things are good now, but it's just... Uh, well, usually yeah. someone will spend, the you know, too much time on one and not the other. Yeah. yeah. Right? But you watch people are... Like, yeah, you said, like, 99% of the people won't notice it. Mm -hmm. But the 1% that does will be so fucking vocal about it that everyone else will then start looking once they read this person's comments. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, I I never would have noticed certain things about watches until I was told them, and then I couldn't unsee them Mm -hmm. afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, It's almost like you're looking for Short hands, particularly. Yeah. When people, when brands do really short hands. Yeah. Once I, I, it was, like, not something I thought about until I was like, ugh, the hands are so short Mm -hmm. on that. I was like, oh, shit, they are. And now I just can't unsee that. Yeah. Seiko does a lot of short hands. Yeah. Seiko does, yeah. But even, like, Rolex does, too. Mm-hmm. Like, Rolex, the, the Yachtmaster 2 mm-hmm. has, like, freakishly short hands. It's, like, a huge dial with, yeah. like, ugh. No, never. Yeah, it's like they blew up the case size but then blow up everything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, like, now I can tell when a watch is, like, a big watch but has a little movement in it, mm. you know, yeah. stuff like that, where where I just can't unsee it, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. Um so what is like, what was the hardest one of those things to figure out? Cohesion. Yeah. yeah. You know, getting everything together, um, working together, working harmoniously, like, and getting all those deadlines, manufacturing mm-hmm. deadlines to line up so that you yeah. can get a product out on time. Yeah. Which is what we're dealing now with. Um, where we're yeah. Dealing yes. In, right? yeah. 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 Tornadoes. Yeah. The bitch. Yeah. Oh, the tornado God. in Switzerland. Yeah. That and that that had del- put delays on our movements for this watch. <laughs> like, well, yeah. what do you do about that? Like, I don't fucking nothing. Like, wait. you wait, you wait yeah. for the movements. I yeah. don't know there were tornadoes in Switzerland. Yeah, remember the there the was. Salita, I mean, like, uh, the I didn't Salita know the factory. Got I didn't. I didn't know uh, there were actually like tornadoes. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I know. I, it's the first I've so ever like heard the Midwest of, over there or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's the first I've ever heard of like a natural disaster. Uh, there sure other were. than an avalanche. Yep. Yep. Yeah. The Kansas of uh, of Switzerland. <laughs> Winds up to 217 kilometers per hour. Oh, so, wow. You know, so, like, 40 miles an hour? No, okay. Yeah. Um, that's fast. That's fucked up. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so is it, like, it's got to be like uh, like cooking, right, where you work backwards oh. from the finish time, and that's that's when you place orders and stuff like that, right? Yeah. I mean, you can instantly tell when someone's good at cooking, like, experience versus not, because mm-hmm. someone who's good at cooking, everything has a purpose and like when they start it right Every yeah ingredient. yeah so that at the end the dish can come out at the you know at the proper yeah time. So if someone's really good at cooking they can make four different things that are all done yep. within like five minutes of each other yeah. yeah that's like that's the key yeah yeah so how many different watches have you guys come out with in the last like six years oh, there's man. been a bunch yeah. right so 
2017 is when we started. We had our debut debut model. Um, yeah. So that first year, only one model. But then the following year, we came out with three brand new models. Yeah. Literally every dollar we made, reinvested back into the business. We were we were so broke. That, yeah, that was a tough year. At, like we always think go back to the time of 2018 because like we didn't have a dollar to our name because everything was going back into re yeah. into making new models, and it was a, one of the toughest times for us. But we also look at it the most fondly. Yes, please. Yeah, I, I would say yes to that. What? So, how much like capital does it take? Assuming you have like like. A little, you have a little bit of knowledge. You've done a little bit of research. Yeah. Maybe you've done some modding or whatever. Uh -huh. You've drawn a design, at least at a basic level. Yeah. How much money does it take to develop a watch and produce, you know, a hundred pieces or something, or whatever, or whatever, yeah. and, and uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, prototypes are not that expensive. Yeah. Three, three k or less. Three yeah. k or less. So yeah, you can have a, a, a one mm -hmm. single working prototype based on a design. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's like mostly, like the ones you got for me. Like the the, the that's like pretty much representative mm -hmm. of the finished yeah. product. Yeah. Well, that's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Okay. Yeah. No, it's it's not that hard to make a watch. No. But it's very hard to make a good watch. Okay. Especially yeah. nowadays, it's so easy now compared to seven years ago, and then from seven years ago, it was way easier seven years ago than it was ten years ago. Is that yeah. because of the communication tools? Because of the popularity yes. of watches means there's just all more of it options. Everything? Also, suppliers are just there now, right? Yeah. They're they're kind of like they're waiting for for people like us to come in and want to make a watch. So the just the mere existence of micro brands in general and how many more there are now, no, it's means that there's just an, another economy to serve them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I mean it's it's honestly not even just micro brands. All all big brands kind of go through all the same factories, not always the same OEM, mm -hmm. but the end factory yeah. still serves the same. You know, like cases are made in three or four spots. Whoa, yeah, yeah. For yeah, the I mean stuff, the movements yeah. that we're using for the Canyon like are in a bunch of other watches. Yeah, yeah. like it not it's not different at all. It's Le Joux Perret. Like they yeah. sell m movements to all kinds of people. Mm -hmm. um, but the, all right, so it's a few thousand dollars to get a prototype made. Mm -hmm. And then what? And then? Yeah, mass production. Yeah. Uh, usually. It depends. You know, it really depends on the watch, on the movement. Is, the, is it like when you go from prototype to mass production, mm -hmm. is it like do you just call the person who made the prototype and you go, okay, go. I'll take a hundred. Here's I'm you sending could, the wire. Yeah, you could. Or do you then? Is Make it a whole different? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But is it? It's not. It's not like okay. Here's a prototype. And now I'm going to go to this manufacturer and this manufacturer and this to make to make more parts. Yeah, I mean that that would be kind of a waste of money because okay. ultimately, like I said, they're all going to the same end factories anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, what would probably be the next step after prototypes would be mass production between three and five hundred watches. Yeah, there's um, minimum order quantities. Yeah. Sure, a um, hundred is probably a bit too low. Um, you you could find OEMs that can make a hundred, but then they'll charge you extra because they have to make a minimum amount of every part. Yeah, and then whatever's extra, they're gonna charge you for it into that into that hundred pieces. Yeah, yeah so yeah, that yeah. unit price basically. Goes so the industry, right, right. industry standards is usually three to five hundred. Okay, and you know, so after the prototype, you specify any changes you want to be made, and then you put a uh, deposit down for mass production. And then once those watches are done and assembled, um, you pay the balance, they ship it to you. But in your case, you guys do a final assembly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you find that that improves the QC, or do you find that your audience cares that they're assembled in L.A., or both? both. It's both. Yeah. 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 The whole reason why we did it was because all the brands we had, all the watches we had, we found issues with them. Mm -hmm. And... If you can find issues with one watch that you get, can you imagine how many issues you can find over 500 yeah. or 1,000? And we didn't want that headache. And it's kind of hard to control that if you're not on the assembly floor, mm -hmm. like hovering over these people. Um, so we decided, hey, let's assemble it ourselves. And naively, I think back then, we... Uh, oh, it's not that hard. Yeah, right? it's not that hard. Yeah. Uh, one guy can do, you know, 1,000 a year. Yeah. Why not? It's much much harder than that, but you know we were young. We didn't know anything. We didn't have any prior. If you were if you were fully assembling it yourself, how many watches can you assemble in a day? So I, I get asked that a lot. Um, so I used to do most of the assembly, right? So if if all the so I always say, I always caveat it with, are the parts good? Yeah. If the parts are good, you can 
man, you can like. It's like a printer. Yeah, it's like a yeah. printer, man. You do a ton at a very high. What's a ton? 10 in a day? 20? It depends oh, on the watch. Yet. Like oh, if you it's do 50 a day? If it's okay. a three hand uh, watch like this? Yeah. Simple, 50. If the parts are good. Yeah. Right. Rarely is that the case, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, and this is why we decide to just do it ourselves, the, the OEM side of our business, just to make sure that, oh, we, th this batch of watches had an uh, issue with the minute hand, so let's go find a new minute hand supplier. If the parts right. are not good, can you then go back to the manufacturer and go, hey, these, these 30 minute hands yeah. are not usable? I you need... can, but the problem is that time, right? right. Time is money, so quite literally. Yeah. So if we have to delay a launch and we're running really low on funds, do we just like stop paying our people? Yeah, right? yeah. Right. Like we kind of have to get watches out on a yeah. regular schedule. So, um, so yeah, we would ideally not have to send stuff back and forth. We'd rather get them in, assemble it, and start selling it. So in, in a perfect world. Yeah, yeah. So you just, do you know you buy extra parts yeah. knowing that yes, now we do, that yeah. ten or fifteen percent are going to be trash. Yeah. We have a lot of extra parts. <laughs> yeah. And man, the scrap bin is just. Yeah. Really, but the, the goal obviously is to get the yield rate as high as we can. Sure, you know, but with manufacturing just f something physical, that it's not possible to do a hundred percent. If we could get like ninety percent, even not, yeah, ninety percent would be is actually pretty good yeah. Yeah. for our standards. Yeah, so that's crazy. Yeah, that's a lot of waste. Unfortunately, it is. But it is. now imagine the parts are small. I guess imagine the watches that sell for like twenty thousand dollars. Right. Oh yeah. Imagine their yield rate is yeah. probably. It's like peanuts, probably, right? I would, I would hope so. Yeah. I mean, I, I think if if it's all in it controlled in house, if mm -hmm. they're literally making all of their own parts, or at least if it's their own movement factory mm -hmm. and their own, you know, like, I imagine like to use a, a a cliche example, like I imagine Rolex is is pretty good, and yeah, you would hope so. Well, yeah, and I guess one, but one, and once you get to a level of continuous manufacturing, I mean, your mm -hmm. guys' business model is you make this many, you get them out for the most part, and then you move on to the next one. But if you know Rolex makes the same GMT for a decade, mm -hmm. if they have to pull some off the line and get spare parts and then fix them and put them back together, the next ones are still going. Yeah. So they're probably or maybe yeah, they, but you know, supply, do their suppliers perfect things over time? If you're going to make the same watch for 30 years, you would hope that, you know, if the, the number of errors coming in on second hands goes from 40% to 30 to 20 to 10 to... Yeah, I mean, you would hope so. And then you would also think that that Rolex wait list would start to shrink. But if <laughs> anything, has gotten larger and larger and larger. So you yeah, got to wonder if, if Rolex is having these issues and imagine someone without resources and how hard it can be to make a watch for someone has... No knowledge, no connections, no money. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, I, I think starting a watch company would be very, very difficult. And and so that's why I'm not doing it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, if, if you're if you're in Switzerland and you're, you're a, a company with history and a name and a, mm -hmm. and a big order backlog, you know, and a lot of money, you're, you're probably getting Vol better, volume talks, better yeah. yield yeah, volume yeah. talks. That's if you have volume, they're going to pay attention to you. They're going to make you a better product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's the end of story. That's for everything. It right? applies yeah. to everything. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. So, what is the you know what what is the most uh, frequently bunk item? What item has the worst? What part of the watch has the worst yield usually? Mm. Like, what's the hardest thing to get right? We made a watch called the Unity uh -huh. last year. And uh, the yield rate on the ceramic insert, on the the blue one in particular, uh -huh. was... It's like a Tiffany blue ceramic, which yeah. is, A, very hard to achieve. Yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. So we had a blue on and pink left. one. And the blue is really hard to come by in ceramic, and it's really hard to achieve. And our yield rate was less than 50%. Oh, wow. Which, it, and ceramic's not cheap. Yeah. So it, it was pretty expensive. I've heard of, even in bigger companies, where yield rates of certain ceramic products are very, very low. Yes. And they, even like uh, we had um, uh, on the Road and Track event we just did, Richard Meal was a sponsor. Mm -hmm. And the guy was telling me about their like sapphire you know, cases, oh, and he yeah. was like, oh my God. I can't he's imagine. like, they're impossible. Yeah. He's yeah. like, they're, he's like, they, they will, you know, they, they take four days to mill each case, and even then, like, one will just randomly crack, 
like you're two two and a half days into the milling process, uh-huh. and then one will just it'll just crack and like can't fix that. Yeah, it's yeah. And then you just then you just have to start over and like yeah. and that. And I remember when Rolex first came out with ceramic bezels. I think mm-hmm. they were having a problem yep. with the the coloring of the of the ceramic as yep. well. Yep. And the the Pepsi GMT, yep. they yep. they changed the color a few times. Mm-hmm. I think mine is the one that I have is like the second. Variant. I remember mm-hmm. a friend of mine got one of the first ones, and if you put his next to mine, like the reds are completely yep. different yeah. colors. Um, and th- those are one piece, aren't they? It's not like the. I think I mean, that was the big deal when yeah. when they first released it. Because it's one piece of ceramic mm-hmm. dyed two yeah. different colors, yeah. and it's not like two yeah. different pieces Just sandwiched glued. together. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The issue with this watch, with the insert, there would be imperfections in the ceramic. Mm-hmm. You'd, you'd see little. It's like air blemishes, bubbles. Uh-huh. air uh, bubbles, yeah. or black spots. Yeah, and we could obviously just you know put it on the assemble it, ship it to a customer. But like most people would would never see it. You would never see it. Hmm. Use that loop, yeah. or you know if the spot's big enough, you're gonna notice it, and yeah. it's just something that like you just can't rub off. You know, and you're like ah. Oh. So fifty uh, yeah. percent. It was uh it was pretty painful, but you know that's especially one of the for hardest. a watch that's seven hundred bucks. It's not yeah. like yeah. it's not like this watch is it's not like there's a lot of margins in a watch that are seven hundred yeah. bucks. Yeah. I mean that's the hardest part about the like when, when we're doing QC on the product is that we always ask ourselves, would anyone notice? Is it passable? Oh, man. Right. And you don't really know where to draw that line. Yeah. Because ev- uh, you know, obviously everyone has different standards. So, you know, sometimes we just have to make a call and say, you know, it's not good enough for us so it's not good enough for our customers and then we'll just scrap it. Do you find that people apply sometimes unreasonable standards oh, yeah. to watches? I mean, oh, yeah. I you know, when I if I buy a watch, it's, like, it's called a Seiko or whatever. You know, they always talk about the 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 the, the spinning bezel not mm. perfect. I, mean, I go, dude, this, that's how you know it's a real Seiko. This, though, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. I was like, dude, this, you know, this thing was like 200 bucks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I don't I could go to a watchmaker and have that adjusted mm-hmm. for forty bucks, you know, or whatever, Some pro- maybe even for free, and or or I could have this movement regulated for fifty dollars and have it, and and I could improve this immensely if mm-hmm. I really cared that much. But I, I'm always kind of surprised when I hear people talk about the imperfections of a very, very affordable watch as if it was something that was much more expensive, you know? Um, yeah. Kids, we got to take one more break from the program for Prize Picks. It's the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two through six player stat projections projections and watch the winnings just roll in. With prize picks, you can win up to 25 times the mon- your money this football season. Play during basketball season, too. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. Right? Right. Prize picks even offers that reboot policy so your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. For football and basketball games, if you've got a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. Prize picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. There's quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Right? So go to prizepicks.com slash tire. Use code tire for a first deposit match up to a hundred bucks. That's prizepicks.com slash tire. Use code tire for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Yeah, buddy. Prizepicks.com code tire first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Prize picks is daily fantasy sports made easy. Now back to the show. Oh, yeah. Man. I mean, like earlier, we were talking about the, the type of customer that we want and the type of customers that we have, uh, you know, b- between us and, and the car storage. Yeah. And it some customers are just that way. You know, they pay attention to really like the minutia of things that doesn't really affect the performance. 
And if it does affect the performance, chances are they have like 13 other watches that they're rotating on a daily basis. What does a couple of seconds a day well, people, really do? People say that right. stuff to me all the time. They're like, do you find that your watch like loses like um, a, a minute a, a yeah. week? It's like it drives me nuts. And I go, honestly, bro, yeah. I haven't worn a watch for more than two days in a row exactly. in a really long time. And that yeah. makes me not a typical customer. Mm -hmm. I get it. Like. It could be annoying if your watch loses a minute a week and you have yeah. to adjust it. But, like, I, I'm not a good basis of comparison because that's sure. not how I wear watches. You yeah. Know? But that that would be the type of customer that comes back to us if there's an issue with their watch. Yeah. And, and, I mean, that's what I was talking about earlier about the other parts of running a watch company that most brand owners need to pay basically pay more attention to versus fixing all the issues that 90% of the customers won't ever see. Yeah. Right? Like... Yeah, you could pay attention to all that, but it's going to take away from your customer service, the after after sales service, and mm -hmm. that probably is a bigger ball to drop than the production side. You could yeah. you could get away with like eighty percent, you know, uh, yield or whatever, seventy percent, sixty percent, whatever whatever it is for whatever brand. But you don't want to get away with only answering eighty percent of customer service. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So, yeah. So that's probably why. That's probably why we aren't as big as we are right I, I don't think that we've paid enough attention to the everything else part of the business i mean right i'm 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 happy where with we are like yeah no i am too it's just uh too. it's our priorities and values yeah. i have a watch brand consulting business actually <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i'd like to sell you the program yeah yeah, yeah. well it's it, you know as you grow a business you know you start with two people and you add people and mm -hmm. and pay attention to things that need it as they come up yeah you know, so it's it's it, it seems pretty pretty good to me. And like yeah. when I've had uh, people emailed me about orders that that and, uh, for the the Green Canyon or whatever, and you know, you guys seem to be pretty well on it. So I think it's probably all right. Our watch that we did together, um, the Canyon, which I'm wearing my orange one, and uh, Colin's actually wearing the green one on the the NATO strap that's going to come with uh, with it, which is really cool. Shout out to Under the Cuff for supplying our two-piece NATO straps. I really like those. Um, this was the first, you know, every watch that you've sold up to this point was under $1,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And when we first started talking and I said, then you you said you approached me and said, you know, would you like to do a watch? And I said, yes, but I want it to be certain things and I want it to be different than what you guys already make. I, I don't want to just do a new color. I want to change a few things. but. And I also really want it to be something that is incredibly high quality um, and worth it. And so we we came up with this price of of twelve hundred dollars. And um, in the beginning, you guys, I think, were a little nervous about that because your customers were used to sub thousand mm -hmm. dollars. But I was pretty confident that if we made the watch worth that much money, that that people would be happy to pay that. And uh, even though no one's received their watches yet, it seems like it wasn't a problem mm -hmm. to sell them. Why were you guys, for for such a long period of time, so committed to the sub thousand dollar price point? Even though you can clearly build a very high quality watch if you if the resources are allocated. Yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, just where we really enjoyed. When, like when we were collecting watches and mm -hmm. when we were learning about watches, that's kind of the price point that we knew the best because that's where we were collecting mostly, yeah. right? So that's the the main reason. Uh, you know, but I, I do have to say, like we work with a lot of third parties, like supplying parts for a lot of other companies, but working with you was a freaking breeze because we came in and you knew exactly what you wanted. We got the design done within a week, a week and a half, and it was yeah. Like, the process was pretty fast. Yeah, it was off to the races, <laughs> and that's it made it really, really easy for us yeah. to to communicate with our vendors because we we're like, nope, he doesn't want that. Nope, he does want that. Not that. Not that color change. So like, we yeah. knew exactly what you wanted, and you laid it out in a very you know succinct, uh, clear way. So most most designers are not like that. Most designers change their minds over and over again. Really, the only Honestly, the longest part of the process was when we got the final prototypes and we had to decide which of the three colors. Yeah, you know what I, I mean, because they, they were all awesome. Yeah, you know, so I'm glad we decided on two and not just one. Yeah. And even that, even the teal one that mm -hmm. we're giving away for the uh, for the the blood donation yeah. uh, contest, which we got a lot of people entered on that one. Yeah, uh, quite a lot of people have joined Be the Match and and or donated other platelets. There's the teal. If you want to, you still have. 
a couple of weeks. You got about three and a half weeks to enter uh, to win the prototype teal. We are not making this color. It is the only yeah. one, um, and it's uh, you can get it, and you can get. A, I will buy you a, a flight to L.A. if you're in America to come collect it. I'll put you up in a hotel. I will take you up in the canyons in one of my cars. And uh, the it's the, the the post is pinned on my Instagram page. It's the only post that's pinned. So you can see exactly how to donate and uh, how to enter. And uh, and so we got a, we got a, a couple hundred entries right now. People are doing some real nice things to get that watch. You have it, any it is a cars? working watch. We had we had some <laughs> people saying, oh, it's a prototype. So oh, no, it works. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, it actually works. It's functional. It's final. Yeah, yeah. Just yes. the color is yeah. a one-off. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I, I suppose we didn't ever make that clear. Yes, yeah. it is a totally yeah. Yeah. functional watch. <laughs> it has a smog. You it can will, register yeah. it. <laughs> it has the, it'll have the correct movement in it. It's yeah. Every, yeah. It just has XXX on the back, so it's not it's not numbered. Yeah. Um. And it, you'll know it's that one because it's the only one that's that color. It's it's really really a beautiful color. Mm -hmm. That was actually this color was uh was my wife's favorite color, and uh, I think I beat her out in the voting at the end for for minty green. Yeah. yeah. Um. And I think we made the right calls, yeah. but this mm -hmm. this one is a very very popular one. Yeah. And uh, and we have some more watches on the on the horizon, but I think I think you guys can can move up a little bit. I mean, not mm -hmm. that you should abandon the sub thousand dollar watches. There's plenty of people that love those, but I feel like you have the talent uh, and obviously the 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 ability to build s higher quality items. I mean, mm -hmm. this watch, I genuinely think that if this if our watch said Mont Blanc or Bon Mercier or any other number of a dozen mm -hmm. Swiss brands on it, yeah. that this could be a three or four thousand dollar watch and nobody would bat an eye at it mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. Um, it, if it was a Tudor North flag, you know, or yeah. one of those types of watches, it could easily be three to four thousand dollars and 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 it would be worth it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we we do make watches in the two thousand dollar range, just not under our own brand. Right? Oh, you really? Know? So it's not like, like it's not like we're not used to what that quality should look and feel like. What it's do you think? Not... Are you know? I get a lot of people that ask me, really, really, very regularly, about watches that are like fifteen hundred. Mm -hmm. And usually, the what toughest I, price point to be at. Yep. Usually, yeah. what I tell them yeah. is that. In general, there's not a whole lot of difference between a watch that's six or seven hundred and a watch that's fifteen hundred. Mm -hmm. That's usually, no man's land, right? That's yeah. no man's it's land. It's usually like a seven hundred dollar watch with a brand you've heard of. Yeah. So what what would you recommend in the call it twelve hundred to two? Well, you should buy my you should buy my watch. Yeah. You should buy the you should buy the Canyon. Yeah. I mean, f seriously, like if I if if we hadn't done this. Yeah. Um, and I and honestly, I, I think we probably could have priced this higher, mm -hmm. but but I wanted as many people as possible to yeah. be able to buy it, and so I think it's actually for what you're getting. I think it's value priced mm -hmm. at that twelve hundred point. Fifteen hundred is tough. Yeah. I honestly tell people to get fully custom built Seikos for like twelve hundred. Hmm. To you know, like uh, like my dude. Um, and Horology Lab, who built yeah. me the fucking uh, Mother of Pearl Seiko, like I think that was like fourteen hundred, built from from parts, not yeah. based on a real watch, ground up build, top of the line everything, and that's got you know a lifetime of durability mm -hmm. ahead of it, uh, NH thirty five movement and water resistance and all that. Plus, you look at it and it's like it's fire. It looks yeah. awesome. So you've got you really have a statement piece. I literally wore that watch to a Grand Seiko event <laughs> last year. People were like, "What the fuck is that?" Yeah. Like, yeah. guy with a yeah. gold AP was like, yep. "Dude, what are you wearing?" Yeah. And and so I don't think you can get if you if you if you have a vision, especially, mm -hmm. I don't think you can do better than that for that price point. Um, what would you tell? What would you guys tell somebody for um, for that price point? Well, the other day Lieberman was on the show. Mm. His U one would probably be a contender. Yeah, he's wearing a Zin. Oh, Zin! Yeah, Are they, I, I I picture those as being over two grand. Are they? Do they, they have something under two thousand? It bucks? ranges from like a thousand to like four thousand. Okay, like, yeah. sure. So they, it's they, a good starting. They point, make yeah. a good quality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They make quality watch. Yeah. Maybe Alpina. Do they I mean, make stuff around two thousand? I think. I think also, it's a bit lower. Price range is about the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They make they make an okay watch. Yeah. 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 
Um, the Ger- the Germans. Yeah. The Germans yeah. do an okay job. Yeah. Maybe like a Nomos if they want like a yeah. Bauhaus yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, but then again, it's only like the Nomos look. It's right? a they very specific so, yeah. style yeah. if you want a Bauhaus watch. Yeah. And like, I, I think it's a cool watch, but mm-hmm. I put one on once and it looks stupid <laughs> yeah. as hell on yeah. me. It does not, you gotta have a, the right the right wrist and the right vibe for a, mm-hmm. for a Nomos. You gotta have our wrist well, for that. Well, that, that's, yeah. that's a thing too, wrist envy in the I watch know. world. Well, like what, six and a half inch wrist, you can only wear like a certain size watch. Well, right? it's interesting, like, you know, especially with Instagram, you know, you see a watch on Instagram and it looks great on somebody, yeah. and then you put it on yourself and you're like, oof. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, so that, that happened. But to me man, a few the, times. the bigger wrists always wear the watch better. Yeah. You think so? Oh, yeah. Because, like, you got the overhang of the bracelet and, like, the mm-hmm. strap. You can see it, like, on the, you know, on the top and the bottom because, like, your, your wrist is large. So, it yeah. Look, it, like, Get stretched oh, so out like can, that. So you can see some of the strap. I guess, yeah. I've, I mean, if I shaved my wrist, maybe. Yeah. But, but I don't. I'm not the best wrist model, as people regularly yeah, I mean, point <laughs> out to me. <laughs> I mean, we're talking I about that. Like, a, like a Panerai would look like a clock on ours. Yeah, I know, but it'll look yeah. badass on you. Yeah. I've, yeah. You know what? I, 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 I've tried to get into Panerais yeah. so many times. I see them and I want them, and then I put them on. And and I I don't I I can't love them I don't know why Uh-oh. but I feel like they look all right on me it makes sense but like yeah. they don't uh, I maybe one day I'll get that radio mirror with that yeah. sunburst yeah. style oh yeah I like the sunburst actually I think that's uh, I think that is it they're showing yeah the radio mirror if you go down mm-hmm. and find the uh, the one that's got the sunburst style sort of like a guitar there's that one. And then, uh, oh, maybe out of commission. But go go back up, Zach. The the one, yeah, that that one right there. If you picture picture that, but with sort of a more orangey kind of sunburst mm-hmm. vibe, that's the one I like. And those things depreciate. Seven thousand dollars. Yeah, <laughs> oh, but dude, but that shit's like four U's though. Yeah, they they depreciate. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, but it, so if you guys, do you think you could you could. Do a ten thousand dollar watch if you if there was a market for it. That'd be fun. We could. We never have made a ten thousand dollar watch, but it would have to be very very limited. Yeah. Right. At, at, like in our current state. What would like, it What right. would it be if you could make a ten thousand dollar watch? A crazy it? material. Uh huh. Yeah. Like, or something. So, yeah. The case yeah. has to be something one of a kind that someone is willing to pay ten thousand dollars for because yeah. it's different. Yeah. And then the movement would have to be. I don't even know what kind of movement. Just maybe like a rebuilt. New old stock, something, mm-hmm. yeah, like something just very different. Because like again, it's the movement that, for a lot of people, it's the movement that that determines the price. Yeah. Um, Maybe add ten, some tech in there. Yeah. Like Anti shock, anti mag, something like that. Uh huh. Yeah. Just make it crazy yeah. and make it unique, and that's what. Make three. Make three, but yeah. <laughs> would it be like heavily decorated display movement, or would it just be something that that did a cool function? I don't think the function needs to be cool. It just has to have a cool look, you know, yeah. like your like your fourteen hundred dollar Seiko mod. Yeah, mm-hmm. like that's an expensive Seiko, right? Yeah, yeah. So we'd have to make an expensive notice. That's mm-hmm. an expensive Seiko, but it's the cheapest mu- Tahitian black yep. pearl dial yeah. by a lot. Yeah. yeah. You know, you want to you want to step up from that. You need a twenty five thousand dollar Yacht Master yeah. or a fifty thousand dollar Daytona. I mean, yeah. once you get you to that price point, pearl. once you get to that price point, it's all about how unique it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not about oh, this and that like. It's 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 no longer functional at that point. Exactly. Right? It's about what's gonna draw eyeballs to my wrist. Yeah. Kinda like how that Seiko drew eyeballs at the Grand Seiko event. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, we we've never lived in that world, so it's hard no. to imagine what we would do at That's that not our market, mm-hmm. not our world. That's we, so funny. Yeah. People say people say that stuff to me, like if you had a million dollar budget to do a video, like what uh, would you do? I'm like, I have no idea. Yeah. yeah. I've never I've never been anywhere close to that. Yeah. yeah. Um I wanted to do that. I I had asked you guys about doing the kitchen timer, oh, which man. is a count a countdown. It's a reverse chronograph, basically. It's yeah. a, yes. a play on the yacht timer. Yeah. Yes. But it would basically be a kitchen timer, um, which I'd, I think I I would use all the time. Yeah. yeah. I I was gonna ask you like, was there a chef in mind you had, or is it just for your own your own like? because no, I cook in the yeah, kitchen. Okay. I would use it. Like, okay. I, for I would use it. I'd for use me. it too. Yeah. Like I don't I don't typically use chronographs, but I feel like if I had a count a, a reverse chronograph, I would use it. Yeah. So that complication, I told you. Um, yeah. It's only you can't you cannot find any off the shelf movements for that with that complication. It needs to be in house. Mm-hmm. So Panerai has one. Obviously, Rolex has one. 
And then you have some more obscure Swiss brands. There's that, like Hoyer that had one. Yeah, too. they have their own, but they're all developed in house. Yeah, there's some quartz movements that. Uh, yeah. Well. A yeah. lot of the yacht timers from the '70s and stuff are quartz. Mm-hmm. So the, the 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 timer I was talking about for the which would be for the kitchen is based on the yacht timer, which is they they count down from ten minutes to the start of a boat race. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I think yacht timers are really fun. Wait, but do they ding or vibrate? Like is no, there a, not typically. They just they're just chronographs that 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 go count reverse. back. So you just have to look at it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and um, who just uh, Bamford and uh, and Tag Hoyer just mm-hmm. did a pretty cool, yep. Yep. a cool one. Um, but there's a lot of them. In the, it was a very popular thing in like the 70s. And now like boats have like clock. Like if you're gonna race your boat, it's got like a clock built yeah. into it. You don't need a watch anymore. Well, because if someone forgets to look at the watch and they're like, "Why are the other boats leaving?" You're like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you know, there was no alert. Yeah, but like, but that countdown complication could be used for other stuff, mm-hmm. yeah. such as cooking. Yeah. So if you were to take that and put it in a sort of a diver case because oh, you need the di- the dive you need a dive watch in the kitchen because of like the hot steam the water of washing dishes mm-hmm. yep. it actually needs to be more water resistant than a typical yacht timer because if you're on a yacht especially if you're the captain of a yacht you're not really getting wet so it doesn't need to be as water resistant mm-hmm. but like if you're cooking over a hot stove it might you need it i don't know you yeah. cooked I do cook. That's I like. I'm a big fan of uh, of my my kitchen and my chefing. He's very good yeah. at it. Oh man! You know, like for real. That's why I know yeah. that things need to come together in the, at did the you, end. Yeah. You 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 built your kitchen, right? Like did I you? I mean, I didn't physically. But build like it, you but, specified, did you yes. have commercial grade stuff? Or yes. Oh man. Yes. And my That's kitchen is huge. You got to show us a picture. It's I will. It's it's huge and it's spacious and it's got all kinds of awesome shit in it mm-hmm. and. Um, it's the best room. And it, it's because it's where everybody hangs out. Yeah. It doesn't matter how big or small your house is. Yep. Uh, I've lived in big houses. I've lived in small houses. Everybody hangs out in the fucking kitchen. So make yeah. the kitchen big, even if the rest of the house isn't that big. Yeah. And, like, you have a good party room, mm-hmm. yep. too. So, Yeah, cooking yeah. is... Uh, we can talk about food for, all, for, for like, the rest of the podcast yeah. if, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> like, food is the, the greatest thing since watches. Yeah, I mean, other than music and watches, that, uh, that was... But and beer, the, the yeah. Cooking was probably what we bonded over most. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, like, I th- I like, think that let's, a let's do a, a cookoff. A cooking complication could be developed here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm saying we can we can buy these movements from somewhere. Somebody will let's sell them. It. Let's commission. Somebody yeah. will sell them to us. Yeah. yeah. And there's some people. There's people out there that would buy a cooking timer. I yeah. Think. Oh man, I would. It'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Let's look into it. Okay. Yeah. So what? Uh, Oh man, I keep looking at him. The fucking the orange, it's so good. Do you have any regrets as far as the colors go? Like no. when you like when you look at the the three options that that actually yeah, ended no. up getting made. Did I you don't ever, at all. Did you ever go back to the initial? I think there were like a dozen options that we had in the first uh, illustration. No, I never looked at it again. Mm. Yeah. I I didn't go back to it. Uh, the biggest, I mean, when we the, when we went from the two dimensional illustration to three-dimensional illustration to the actual mm-hmm. when I first saw the actual thing mm-hmm. I knew that we had a smash hit mm-hmm. I I mean I I don't know everything about watches but I know what good is yeah and when I saw the the this one and the teal one for the first time I went oh that's fucking good mm-hmm. like that's just that's just the the proportions are right the colors are right the depth of the dial is right the way the bracelet feels on my wrist like that's all it's all like everything about it is so nice mm-hmm. and when i show it to people um some of whom have very fancy watches uh they go wow this is this is a really nice piece and mm-hmm. and i think um, when I when I really saw it for the first time, three dimensions in my hand, I went, "Holy shit! This is this is actually much nicer than I thought the finished product would be." Because you don't know yeah. from a drawing, is it going to feel cheap? Yep. Is it going to feel expensive? Yeah. Is the weight distribution going to be even yeah. around How does it the, look wrist, on the wrist? Which right. is yeah. like a lot of watches where they fuck up is that. It, it ends up being very top heavy mm-hmm. where it, it the, the bracelet's a little too light and the, the case is a little too heavy. This has a really nice distribution around the wrist. And mm-hmm. even when I put on the NATO, it's actually not too top heavy even with, with the NATO strap, which yeah. is really nice. So yeah. I was like just so stoked about these. And um, 
and I really like I I wear them all the time. Like they're definitely. I mean, obviously, I helped design it, but mm. it, but it, it, I have a lot of watches, and it, it has outsized representation in really? terms of what I go to wear. Yeah. yeah, and it's I, what I choose to wear is very rarely based on how expensive or flashy mm-hmm. it is. It's just like what the vibe is of the day. Yeah, and I, and and I, I go to these a lot. Yeah, um, because they just fit so well, and they just they're so legible, and and the colors are so fun. Um, and they they just feel really really nice, mm-hmm. which is is such a great thing for me. I'm so happy that we are uh, yeah. that we're doing this, and I and I, I hope the people who get their watches feel the same way about it that that I do. And um, I can't wait for these folks to actually have them in hands. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited so, for that party. Yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah. Uh, for those, uh, there's a few people listening yeah. probably right now that are that are going to come to California and collect it in person. We were just talking about this based on the. The, the the slight delays with getting the movements. Um, the orange ones are going to be ready just a few weeks after the mint ones. Mm-hmm. And so we're probably going to hold off that party till January and then deliver all of the orange and the mint ones to, the, to yeah. at the same time mm-hmm. um, to people who want to come to California as well as the uh, the winner of the, of the contest. But um, what do you guys uh, what do you guys have coming up? Anything new besesides my shit? Yeah, what do you actually, have? I'm, new yeah, releases? I'm, I'm wearing a, uh, a prototype of a new watch. Oh uh, yeah, I mean it's an old new watch. It, we we came out with the Contrail One and Contrail Two uh-huh. uh, years ago, and this it's like is like an aviation themed thing, right? Yeah, it's yeah. A GMT. So, so it's a true GMT jumping hour. Um, we partnered with Miota to to get that movement. Uh huh. And this, I mean, the last time we released this watch was twenty twenty one twenty twenty one. So yeah. yeah, two years ago, and then they came out with this movement last year. Uh, we're one of the first brands to get it, and probably February is when we're going to be done production. February, yeah. March, yeah, that time frame. It's very cool, black yeah. and white with the uh, with the blue GMT hand. Yeah. It's got the, uh, the what's date cool is the uh, the white part of the bezel is actually loom. So oh, like, that's rad! In, inverse loom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that a lot. Uh, I really I I love f- the fun uh, playing with loom. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, this what is this bezel made of? Sapphire. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, that's something we could play with yeah, for the next one. Mm-hmm. I had a Grand Seiko that was a sapphire bezel, and it mm-hmm. was fucking cool. Yeah, are those really expensive sapphire bezels? It's probably the, one of the more more expensive options. Is you it? Can do. Yeah. yeah, more expensive than uh, ceramic. What's more it's expensive than the, sapphire? It, that is the most expensive is it? option. Yeah. Well, you can get like a solid, like a unless gold. you're going solid gold yeah. or yeah. something, yeah. right? But it looks so cool, Zach. Look at that. It's a really nice piece, yeah. and I love the case back with the uh, with the plane and the mm. and the the contrails. Oh, that's cool. That's a really rad like piece. Size. Yeah, yeah. I mean, w- with sapphire, you can do any color because it's clear, right? So right. you actually paint so on you, the it, underside, uh-huh. you know, and you can do any color. Whereas saf- with uh, sorry, with ceramic, you're limited to what ceramic can handle without yeah. having the air bubbles and all the imperfections. Yeah, so. but we have some. We had some fun ideas we're throwing around for for my next watch. Mm-hmm. We're talking about doing. Some fun coatings, maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe the whole watch is like a totally unique color and not just steel. Mm-hmm. Full dial loom, maybe. Yeah. Um, reverse like panda loom. Um, the sapphire, yeah. the sapphire bezel could be super mm-hmm. fun. Yeah. Can you loom any color of sapphire bezel too, or just white? Whatever loom is available. Uh-huh. So they, they do have like red, yellow, green, blue. They actually have yeah. black loom too, believe it or not. Oh, it just really? it doesn't glow very bright. Uh-huh. So that's kind of the trade off. You can yeah. do other colors, but it won't glow quite as bright right. as just white. That makes sense. Yeah. That's a good idea though. Yeah. Get some cool I think, colored loom. I think on fun bezel. colored loom yeah. Yeah. Uh, is something that's worth playing with. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's fucking cool. Yeah. You like colors, huh? On, I on love watches. colors. Yeah. I like col- yeah, dude. I like playing with color, and I think part of it is that because I'm color blind, um, I the you know the way color blindness works is like subtlety doesn't really work so well uh, for mm-hmm. me. So when something is a bright, vivid color, if I can see it well, mm-hmm. then usually people who see color normally are like, "Holy shit, yeah. that's yeah, fucking yeah. intense." You know, and so Man, the the number of requests we got to get the the color of your Porsche, the strawberry yeah. shortcake, into a watch. I'm like, you know, it just looks silver to him, right? It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. really. You know, I think it would be. It might be worth. I don't know what it costs to have one dial made. Probably a lot. Yeah, but, we could do it. But it 
to me, I've found, and a couple people have sent me little things, gifts and whatnot, that are frozen berry in color. And to me anyway, and granted I see color differently than other people, the bigger the canvas, the mm-hmm. better that color mm-hmm. works. Yeah. When you make it, when you put it on something small and flat, I would and add. flat, yeah. the the nuance of that color doesn't really work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of car paint, well, shines. No pun intended. Like when it's on a curve, because mm-hmm. yeah. you can see the different layers of it, and the yeah. it sparkles yeah. here, and it's flat there, and it's red here, and it's pink here. Yeah. And you see all of that like on one fender. Yeah. Like yeah. the Maserati, for example, yeah. the MC20 outside is this incredible aquamarina color Mm -hmm. which if you look at it for like two seconds it's like oh blue gray but if you put it in the right light it's got like gold sparkle and blue sparkle and pink sparkle and it transitions to like seven different colors and i think that's what frozen berry does too and when we it was part of the the two-dimensional designs Mm -hmm. when you gave me those and i just i didn't really see it it Mm -hmm. looked almost almost silver yeah um and and so the 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 three colors that we narrowed it down to were really three of the most vivid colors on the chart. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, even the mint, which is which in in this sort of indoor light is rather subtle. Outside, that's a very bright color. That yeah. mint. Um, <laughs> and so many people think it's Tiffany blue, and it's not. Yeah, it's I mean defi- that's that's hard to get across through Instagram. That or it's website. not Tiffany blue, or just colors in general. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like just showing what it truly looks like. Yeah, like I'm sure not the orange. The orange you can see from yeah. space. Yeah, but but I'm sure when we when we have that party, people are gonna get the watch and be like, wow, that's a lot more vibrant than I expected it to be. Right. Um, I in, think so. But I, I, I in a good I, way. I think frozen but, berry would have been fun. Yeah. But I just. Don't think it would work as well as these yeah. other brighter colors. Yeah, it's too subtle. Not me. not on this watch. Definitely yeah. not on a. Watch I remember when he told us you were colorblind. I'm like, as designers, we're like, oh, damn. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's are tough. these colors gonna work? Yeah. And then that's we why can I, paint it however we want. You won't know. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, oh, like because that that, pre- that presents another you know type of challenge, right? Like we've we see because we're seeing something different maybe than what you're seeing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I thought that whole process was really interesting. Yeah. And. When he said the berry color looks silver, I'm like, damn. Yeah. I mean, granted, the whole design lab program that, that we did this with you, it's totally new. You're like one of the first, you're, you're our second uh, collaborator. And so like without the experience working with that many people in, on like uh, like notice products, it's tough to really set expectations, Yeah, you know, like and, and figure out, okay, if they're colorblind. Like we don't know what it's like to work with a colorblind person. Well, usually most, but, most people question my color choices mm-hmm. on stuff until they see it in person yeah, and then really. they go you know what that actually that works yeah. that actually works and yeah. then there's a, and there's always a few people that are like deeply offended by whatever I've done yeah there's people I there's people that that think that the Porsche is the greatest thing they've ever seen yeah and there's people that wake up at five o'clock in the morning writing <laughs> to write me an email telling me how much they think it sucks yeah and so you know what it is though it's not the color of the exterior it's the color of the interior that I think is a bit jarring the red yeah, yeah. like the, I think you, it works though. That, yeah you wouldn't think it would work but when I saw it at the no. Brecky car club on, on, yeah. it, on paper lighting, it does not work yeah I'm in like, person it works this is beautiful yeah, yeah it like, works yeah. yeah it does especially because you paint we painted the brake calipers uh-huh. and stuff and yeah. the, the wheels yeah. it all kind of comes together yeah but like yeah if you if you don't see it in person you might not think it works yeah. but that's almost a sign of a true talent though right like maybe making, I don't making know. things <laughs> that don't mesh actually be cohesive yeah right? I mean I think that's it's important to try stuff like that yeah and um, and so fortunately with the watches um, you know we didn't go that far off the deep end it's mm-hmm. really just the dial color and you know it the, the case and the bracelet yeah. are silver so like you know that's not that hard to to make something like that work let's go off the deep end for the next one. Oh yeah we'll yeah. do some fucking crazy <laughs> shit yeah no the next one i want to be like really yeah. wild okay um i want it to I be want... like your 718 in terms of in terms of just how wild the colors will be on paper mm-hmm. yeah but then when you see it in real life it's going to be like that thing's pretty freaking awesome. Yeah, we're yeah. gonna we're gonna make something that's a little weird and yeah. and and a little controversial, maybe. Good. But yeah. but I want it to be to the next. Now that I know like what going from two D to three D looks like, and 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 what's possible, um, and and really what um, what we can do for a, for in my opinion a very affordable price, because mm-hmm. um, this is so much watch for twelve hundred bucks. Yeah. Um, and, that, and let's that, do more prototypes. 
Like, mm. let's not be limited to three. We'll okay. Do, we'll do like 12. Sounds good. Fucking a whole case of prototype. Damn. Yeah. Fucking get yeah, so, why not? so many people like, to give him blood. That's no, a lot of blood. That's a yeah. lot of blood. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's go to the Patreon. We've got a yeah. few there. Uh, Patreon.com slash the Smoke Entire Podcast. Might uh, need another pour of this. Do all the, uh, you can do all the things. You can get an ad-free listening experience, and you can uh, be the first to get access to these uh, these Notice Watch collabs because uh, the all all 100 of the mints went to our patrons. They did, didn't even make it to fucking yeah. public, which I think your people were mildly annoyed by. Yep. Uh, the, the orange ones, we're reserving 100 for the patrons, and then 100 will go to uh, the public. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you you'll be able to buy the public will be able to buy those on launch day through Notice's website. Uh, the patrons will have an early access day mm-hmm. for their hundred, um, right? Yes, yes, and yes. that's going to be January first. And then hopefully, if these sell up, maybe the next one, maybe we make a little more, maybe we make a few more. Yeah, because uh, I want everybody to get their watches. I don't want to hold back. More colors. More right colors. Yeah, yeah, keep it going. Um, Derek says, I've been itching to get some form of wrist adornment for a few months. I bounce between office and warehouse work, so I've been hesitant to jump into a nice watch. Beyond a, uh, a rubber case or bezel, what are some things I should be looking for that point to a quality watch that can stand up to some abuse? <laughs> Here we go. Under, fi- <laughs> under everything. Recommendations wow. under 1500 that isn't a G-Shock. Uh, well, Notice has lots of good watches for you. They're the th- in the seven hundred to thousand dollar range. Um, I'm terrible at selling our own brand. Let's make a rule not to recommend our own stuff that, for these questions. All right, yeah. they'll they'll make yeah. a rule to not recommend their yeah. own stuff yeah. if you guys agree to go to their website first before shopping anywhere. Sure, else. that's fair. Yeah, that's. Um, fair. I mean, look for me. If you want a watch that you can wear with any outfit and will hand up, handle some abuse, for me it's Seiko. That's mm-hmm, just. Yep. Uh, their watches, they're they're stylish. You can change the straps to change up the look. The mo- the movements last a lifetime. You can service them. Um, you can customize them. Fifteen hundred buys you like one of the nicest Seikos on the planet. Yeah, you know, and you can you can spend five or six hundred on a diver and then customize it, or you can spend fifteen hundred to two thousand on one of Seiko's higher end watches if you want. Yeah, or like a used Grand Seiko. You could right. get used so. Grand Seiko as well. But I think, I mean, unless you're literally smashing the thing into yeah. concrete or steel, you know, a, a steel sport watch will hold up to a pretty high mm-hmm. high level of abuse. Yeah. And if you're willing to go used, Breitling Super Ocean, um, Tudors, various mm-hmm. Tudors, mm-hmm. um Probably the older ones <coughs> at, at yeah. 1500. Yeah. Older yeah. Omega Seamasters. Older yeah. Omega Seamasters. Yeah. 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 Um, the, the first part of his question was, what do you look for um, w- when you're looking for quality? Is there anything oh. like when you go to like a watch store? I mean, I got to uh, hold it. You yeah. Know, I got to yeah. hold it. But also like, you know, if it's got a lot of water resistance, mm-hmm. that usually points to something that's put yeah. together pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd probably check the bezel, make sure it's like not, um, you know, like there's no play on it. And then for a recommendation for a watch, for a quartz, I'd go. There's a there's a company called Sang and Instruments. Uh-huh. They do mostly military stuff, but they make a really solid quartz watch. Huh. Um, for an automatic. And I hate this price point. It's, it's really, a tough price point. Yeah, Zen, Zen yeah. U1. Uh, Maybe Oris, some of the Oris, yeah. yeah. Oris makes a great tool watch. Yeah, I would also say for that kind of that kind of watch, avoid leather bracelets, mm-hmm. um, avoid leather straps. You know, if you're going to wear it every day, yeah, the leather is probably not going to hold up. You yeah. can either get a NATO or get a rubber strap, something that's washable. Get right? something with a with a steel a yeah. steel bracelet. Uh, Ryan says, uh, "Oh, well, I think we uh, I think we already talked about mm-hmm. this, but yeah. uh, let's see." Just to, to take it back, for something like the Canyon, they came to me and said, you know, we'd like to work with you, and are you interested? And I said, yes, but I want it to be a little different. And they said, okay, well, look at what we are making now and tell us what you like and don't like about various models of watch. And they showed me a watch that they make called the Sector. Um, which has similarities to this watch, but it's a different size. Uh, the case shape is a little different. Yep. Um, 
and there are there are some things about it that are similar, but if you start to look close, there's a, actually a yep. lot of differences. Yep. And I said, okay, let's. I'd like to start with this, but I want it to be uh, 41 millimeter. I want to keep it thin, so I don't want to have a clear case back. I want to have a, a the the clear case back adds a millimeter, so I want to prioritize it being not too thick, so it can fit under long sleeves. You know um, that case back design was really fun to make as well. We didn't oh yeah. we didn't talk about it yet, but it's um it's like a really deep stamped three D yeah. um representation of the outline of the route that you love to take. Yeah. Um, on on you know all your it's all your drives. A, it's a topographical map of the Angeles Forest. Yes. And actually, Zach, if you pull up the uh, the pinned post where the giveaway watch is, we have the uh, the photo of the case back is uh, is on there, which is cool. Um, so that that is a topographical map of the Angeles Forest, and then it's uh, it's it's a, a loop. The outline of it is a loop that is that will line up with Google Maps. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is the the route that Zach and I like to drive and film our car reviews on, which is pretty cool. That's it's a, a really that's cool a fun detail. detail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. very de- very detailed without probably adding a bunch of chunk to the back of it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like it's going to scratch yeah. your wrist, but it looks topographical. It's yeah. Cool. But It'd be cool to document the the dive watch. Yeah, you know, or and any anything we do in the future. Yeah, we no, we'll, document from uh, from the beginning of the design process to the end, so that we can answer these questions. Yeah, with like well, and also you know, you guys and unsurprisingly said we want to do some automotive details, and I. Uh, famously, at least in these parts, mm-hmm. am like super averse to quote car themed watches. I think they're mm-hmm. really fucking hokey. Mm-hmm. And so I said, if we're gonna if we're gonna allude to cars, it needs to be in a way that is so subtle that most people won't even notice it's there. That still makes sense for watch people, right? Too. Yeah. So yeah. that's why the the depth rating is in bar yeah. because that's what a lot of either oil pressure or mm-hmm. boost gauges are used. Um, the crown it sort of subtly looks like a tire tread, mm-hmm. but only kind of. It's got. Is this brass? Or is it? Uh, it's, it's steel, but it's um. It's like a gold, a gold colored steel, electroplated, yeah. like a PVD. So that that's that's the the edge of the crown is gold ish, um, to just sort of reference the, a couple of my cars that have those color wheels, and then there's the stuff on the case yeah. back. But other than that, I mean, there's nothing about this watch that says cars, yeah. and and I really like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I don't think I think everyone who is into watches understands the connection with cars and doesn't really need it spoon fed to them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then once we agreed on the, on what the dimensions should be roughly and what the bracelet should be, I liked the idea of the Jubilee bracelet, but a little flatter, not as bumpier. Um, so it wears really soft. And then you guys were really, um, you're all about these, uh, toolless, Toolless mm-hmm. watches, so you can take the bracelet off without tools. You can yep. adjust the micro without tools. I love that. I think mm-hmm. that's just fantastic. Um, and so once it was that, then it just became about colors and fonts and hands. And you sort of gave me uh, a bunch to choose from, and I kind of went that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. And mm-hmm. so it was a fun process for for me. Um, and they obviously had the. Um, the manufacturing and all that stuff already already set up, so the the, the entire thing was pretty smooth. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was yeah. Great. Like I said earlier, it was like the easiest collaboration that we've ever had to do. Well, let's not speak too soon. The yeah. watches aren't out yet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. Um, don't sink says uh, I just paid off my student loans last night. Congratulations. Congrats. I'm gonna buy a watch to celebrate. I'm looking for something durable and not flashy. Which of your watches would you suggest? You have to sell your own watches now. Right. It says, I'm eyeing oh, the Black Pilot. Okay, so durable, I'd say sector deep. Sector uh, deep. If durable, if you're if you're leaning towards the durable side, I'd this say This is a dive deep. watch. 500 it's, meters. Uh, yeah. 500 meters? Yeah. That's far beyond what humans can hold up to. But Yeah. <laughs> the watch will survive beyond you. It's a nice looking um, watch. And isn't this what didn't you guys do? The other collab was based on this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we uh, we did a full DLC case, um, but yeah, this is definitely one of our more popular watches. That's um, a good watch. Very legible. Yeah, it's got a date. Uh, Oyster style bracelet. Do we don't do we are we allowed to call it that? Uh, I mean, probably not, but but that's you know. what it is. Yeah, we'll see. You'll, we'll see where that goes. <laughs> uh, does that also have toolless everything? Everything. Yeah. 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 
Um, if if you want something less tooly, probably I'd say probably the sector sport, right? With the one that this was. I think the pilot. Is, is, the pilot. Is, yeah, the pilot also is. Yeah, the black pilot is. I yeah. like this sector pilot. I think this one is cool. I like I like the Blackbird one. Countdown uh, bezel, uh, countdown friction bezel. It's like, you know, you, you have to know how to use it to really get value out of it. Day date though, but so, it looks um, cool. But yeah, that's true. That's the true. day date is stacked on top of each yeah. other, so oh, it doesn't. That's neat. So it looks yeah. cool. It looks. Yeah, yeah. It's Different. functional and it looks good. Yeah, that's a nice. That, I like the steel bezel there. That works mm-hmm. for me. That's cool. That'll hold up. Steel bezel's good. You can knock it into stuff. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, it's gonna it's gonna take wear and tear very well. It almost looks better when you beat it up. Yeah, I like the uh, between these two. Um, you got a black bezel and a steel bezel. I like the steel. Bezel. I'm steel mm-hmm. all the way. Yeah, yeah. steel yeah. bezel's Same. good. Yeah, I like my my Rolex Explorer with that st- oh, the steel man. bezel. Yeah. That's that's the move for me. It's a classic. Yeah, very nice. What else do we have, Zach? Can we go back to the page, please? Uh, ben says, uh, with the explosion of the watch market the last five, ten years, can you talk about if and how consumer choice has changed from watches being a niche hobby to people seeing watches as assets? Uh, and then says, goes on no, to say, no, they're, they they're tools. The they're, products of the quality of design, uh, good price point. So. Yeah, their watches are, should not be investments. They are just. Tools. I just think the past three years, like the, the everything bubble, everything exploded and turned into an asset, and then. Is coming crashing down now. So yeah, yeah. all the all, all the high end stuff yes. is off like twenty percent. Yep, eight, yeah. somewhere between fifteen and thirty percent for most high end pieces. But mm-hmm. those prices were all fucking hype driven mm-hmm. yeah. bullshit anyway. Yeah. What, what are our car prices like now? Settling. Yeah, yeah. I mean the, the there was a new and used. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean there you know the 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 spending of twenty twenty one and twenty twenty two. Between the interest rates changing, yeah. um, and and the production of new cars catching up to demand, um, and I think people kind of buying, finding the cars that they wanted, and sort of being out of stuff to be interested in yeah. to some level. Yeah, um, it's crazy. Yeah, and I think pe- with watches too. I think a lot of the the very rich people bought so many watches and they're Mm -hmm. like what the fuck am i what am i doing with all this yeah you know they got 40 50 watches they're all fifty thousand dollars it's ridiculous um and the people that i know that are like secondhand dealers and stuff they're like turning people away who are trying to sell them you know their watches yeah um i i'm i have what i what i need i'm not i'm actually at a point where i'm not looking for any new watches and mm-hmm. I, and i but i'm also not looking to sell which is a kind of a nice nice place to be mm-hmm. but um i i like the idea of it even though there's some stuff that i should have sold a year ago mm-hmm. you know th- i like the idea of of people just coming back to them being something that they can appreciate the craftsmanship yeah. and and use them, mm-hmm. as opposed to hoard them as as an asset, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but at the same time, like, I think the since you know the the Rolex, the AP, the Patex, or were you know they're valuable, but they were a lot of that last couple of years was driven by sort of the hype economy. Mm-hmm. Now, I think there's a shift towards the higher end micro brands like Ming mm-hmm. and Rexap and MBF and, yeah. and, and those kinds of things that are really being seen as unique and art yeah. type pieces. Yep. Yeah. You know? Yeah, more the boutique brands. Yeah. Well, and, and I think, yeah, I I, yeah. I think they the folks who are buying at that high end want to support individuals mm-hmm. as opposed to being fucking dicked around by the Rolex boutique. Or, yeah, you know, and the whatever. value proposition is certainly much better. Yeah, for, for smaller companies, obviously, yeah. right? Yeah. So and they're all just everyone's just showing off for each other anyway, right? Yeah, so, yeah. You know, no, yeah. no one. You go to the watch meetup and like no one's impressed by your Daytona now, but like you yeah. show up <laughs> with like. A Ming or or something that's, that's everyone wants to talk to you. They yeah, want to see your watch. They're just yeah. they're just different yeah. and, and neat. Yeah. Um, Chris N says, "What are your favorite watch YouTube channels? Do you watch watch videos?" Yeah, yeah. Um, Random Rob is really really fun. Um, 
I like him because he's just very, it's like the videos are very raw. It's him in front of a camera talking about a watch. Um, but he's a very trusted voice in the watch community. Uh, Teddy Baldessar, you know, he's he's collaborated with Kevin O'Leary. Um, he he does a lot of more of the fun side of the watch videos, but they're all very highly produced. Mm. Um, probably, oh, you're terrific. He does good videos too. Oh, I thought you were just giving me a compliment. Yeah, no. Well, <laughs> well you are terrific, but there's also a channel called, called You're Terrific. Called You're Terrific? Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's kind of in between. It's still very watch-centric, but it's very polished watch reviews. Okay. Those would probably be my top three right now. Okay. Yeah. I don't really watch a lot of uh, content mm -hmm. on watches. I just kind of like, I mean, I see it on Instagram and whatever, so yeah. I'm aware of the new stuff. But yeah. That's enough. That's kind of yeah. enough for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Antibacterial yogurt says, uh, Matt, when you're driving one of your classic cars, how much pleasure do you, do you derive from uh, connoisseurship versus the pleasure derived from dynamics, engagement, and performance of the car? Same question oh. applies to watches. Um, I would say it's more, it's, it's, it leans more towards the dynamic uh, engagement and stuff. I mean, I, I really like... Uh, interacting with machinery same thing is same thing as with watches that's why i i own 30 watches and only one of them are is quartz mm. um and but it's you know when i go drive uh, a car with a gated manual gearbox that's a very enjoyable thing mm -hmm. to engage with when i go drive my porsche the, the steering is so you know forget the power the, the steering is so good mm -hmm. um when I drive uh, the NSX, the fact that the dash is like so low, I have this unbelievable view forward. It's almost like there's just nothing there at all. Um, that's just fantastic. So do you feel like EVs are kind of like the courts of, of cars? Totally. it doesn't have any of that stuff. That totally. You, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, 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 there's, to me, they're just, they're tools. Yeah. You know, they're toasters. Mm -hmm. um, and that's fine. There's room in the world for that. But I have yet to engage with an electric vehicle, even a very, very high performing one, mm -hmm. in the way I would enjoy. You know, because uh, a high perf the high once you start going so fast, it doesn't matter. Like, like my Ferrari 328 is fun at 50 miles an hour. I don't need yeah. to go 150 miles an hour to have to have fun engaging with that machinery. Mm -hmm. And so, as EVs become just amazing. You know, the level of performance increases, but not necessarily the le level of engagement. Sure. So, yeah, I mean, they, they, they serve a purpose, and they're all right, um, and, and, and that's okay. Even if you want to go race them, like, yeah. okay, cool, have fun. Yeah. Um, but that's not what I love about watches or cars. I like, yeah. I like, I like winding the watch, yeah. you know, yeah. hearing, hearing the rotor do the thing. Mm. I, I like, I like interacting with a machine. Yeah. I feel pretty much the exact same yeah. way. Yeah. And so it's with the cars, it's the same thing. I like yeah. how they look and, and I like, yeah. you know, I like when people give me a thumbs up or whatever when I'm driving them, but it's really about that engagement with machinery that, mm -hmm. that I'm mm -hmm. into and, and all the cars are, they're just, they feel different. So yeah. it's whatever. Oh, today, you know what? I, you know what? I really want. I really want that kind of vibe today. So, so I yeah. you know, do that. If you had to choose one EV, which which would you choose? Taycan. Okay. If I mean, assuming I could afford it. Yeah. yeah. You know, the Taycan um, GTS Sport Turismo, the the wagon. It's like two hundred grand. Uh, yeah, one one fifty. One fifty. I mean, it's expensive. It's yeah. I can't afford it. It's really expensive. You can get. 95% of the goodness of a Taycan with the base rear wheel drive one. Mm -hmm. It's it's as fast as you ever need to go. It's got the right it, it looks like a Taycan. It's got the right steering and mm -hmm. seating position and all that and and you can get that for under 100. Um I see so, a lot of those lately. Yeah. Well, they had some problems with production in the beginning, but yeah. now now they've come around and they're awesome. I gotta say, they're not the. It's not the prettiest Porsche. I like. I think the wagons, the, the wagons Sport Turismos, are yeah. great. Yeah, that's why I, w I would go wagon, and uh -huh. you get more rear seat room as well with the wagon. Um, I agree on the 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 it's, regular. It's sedan, not like a classic looking. Like it's not gonna. It's not gonna go down down. You know, as a classic looking Porsche. You know what? I said that about first gen Cayennes, and now they're collectible. So what? Mm. <laughs> you know, what a, who knows? Yeah. Um, 
Well, it, and it re, but it remains to be seen if any EV, aside from the, the Tesla Roadster, the original mm-hmm. Tesla Roadster, it remains to be seen if any EV will be considered collectible yeah. ever, really, because they're such appliances. Yeah. Yeah. Last one, Zach says, thoughts on the Tudor Fast Rider. I like something a bit different that maybe didn't sell super well and isn't the most popular, looking at sub 5K. Um, the Tudor Fast Rider yeah. is a very interesting watch. Um, it's their chronograph. I don't like the name Fast Rider. Um, I have to say it's not my favorite <laughs> Tudor. Um, nothing wrong with it, per se, no. but it, they're a little wonky for me. It looks a bit department story. Yeah. It does, Michael right? Michael Kors. Like the size of the fonts and the size of the subdials yeah. is like not really right. Um, why, why is the uh, logo in a white box? I don't know. On that one, that's really strange. It's out, fortunately that one's out of stock. <laughs> I'm sure it's a. I'm sure it's a high quality piece. Um, what is it? Can you get it? What's a used Black Bay Chrono? Like, I, can you? Can't you get a used Black Probably Bay Chrono? Probably for less than that. Yeah, I would. I'd get a Black Bay yeah. Chrono instead all of all in the box. Oh, that's got like some yeah. racing stripes yeah. on it. Yeah, I would say that's not for me. Yeah. Um, under 5K, if you want to chronograph, so many used Breitlings. Mm-hmm. I mean, Breitling makes a great chronograph, and there's a million of them that are under that price point. And it, you could you could get a Black Bay chronograph for under 5K, I think. And that thing is, is on a leather strap, so yeah. it's yeah. going to stink. Yeah, that's yeah. a no-go. Um, leather straps are a once-in-a-while yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. I don't even wear them two days in a row. No, you can't. Cause yeah. Winter, I only wear them in winter, and I only wear them one day at a time. Yeah, I'm the same way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's why mine turned into jerky. It, it yes. happens. Ooh. Yeah, yep. you can't do it every day. Yep. And you gave me some. You guys make straps, too. You can get a, You can get straps. Can you get them on the accessories, accessories tab? Accessories, yeah. Yeah, so if you want, uh, you can get a notice strap for your other watches, too. This one is pretty cool. It's like a technical uh, fabric that's yeah. rubbery. Tech tough is what Tech it's called. Tech tough. Yeah. So it looks like cloth, but it, it works like rubber? Yeah, it's like rubber uh, textile. R- rubberized. Yeah. 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 And then on the bottom is actually full rubber. Yeah, so that's good. That's good if you want that strap look, but uh, you're going to get sweaty or wet. Yeah. Yeah. And then you gave me this nice Horween uh, uh, leather one. I'm going to figure out what I'm going to put this on, but it looks great. Maybe one of these, I think, will work on my Speedmaster. This one will be cool if it fits the Speedmaster. Yeah. Because it looks like a fucking... uh, spacey thing yeah um but i really like these two so you got you can get straps and accessories and strap change tools and stuff from their uh their website and of course january 1 will be the um order date for the public for the orange canyon and you'll get it what what do we do a couple days before that for the patrons is that yeah. how we're going to do yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. we'll, we'll figure works. it out. Yeah, yeah. Something, the, something like that. But, so stay tuned, patrons. Uh, if, and if you join, even if you join the Patreon now, that's fine. You don't. There's no, there's no time requirement. Um, and, of course, you still have a few weeks to enter the giveaway to win that prototype one-of-one one watch, plus a trip to L.A. to collect it and, uh, and hang out with us and go on a drive in the canyons. Um, Wes and Colin from Notice, check it out at noticewatches.com, and of course follow them on Instagram. Thanks for hanging out, boys. Thank you. Thank I you. can't wait to see the very awkward photos you shot of me today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This was check fun. out today's photo shoot, and uh, thanks for listening, everybody. We will see you guys later.